Thank you, Juan and Melanie. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I love the way you worship, and that is awesome. And we're just so glad that you have uh, joined us on our website to uh, listen to a powerful message from Pastor Marcus Tinsley in just a little bit. And uh, just wanting to say, um, we praise the Lord. We hope you had a wonderful Lord's Day. And tonight, as you're listening to yet another sermon on this Lord's Day, that you would uh, just rejoice in the fact that we get to do this uh, today. And a couple hundred people joined us this morning by way of uh, either Facebook or YouTube. So we praise the Lord for that. We think with uh, all things considering, uh, technologically everything uh, came across pretty good. We have some ideas about how we can even improve this, but uh, we hope that you're hearing us loud and clearly, and thank you for joining us online tonight. So we're going to uh, pray in just a little bit. I just wanted to say a word about the Second Mile Ministry on Tuesday morning at 11.30 to 1.30. If you have a need or you know of someone who has a need, could use a few groceries, remember Second Mile Ministries here Tuesday morning at 11.30. Right in the back parking lot, and the boxes can be just loaded into the car and they can go. No, they won't be coming into church and they won't need to contact, make contact with people. We'll, we'll bring the food to their car. So let us know if you have anyone who has a need there. Let them know about the Second Mile Ministry. And then on Wednesday night, don't forget, we'll be bringing you yet another message at 6.30. So our usual time, Sunday mornings, 11. Also, Sunday night, 6. And Wednesday night, 6.30. We'll be bringing messages as long as we need to until we uh, get through this. We talked about this morning how that God uses times like this to bring good out of uh, evil. And I'm reminded of Genesis chapter 50, verse number 20, where Joseph said, he said to his brothers, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. God meant it for good. You know, one of today's most successful corporations began in 1916 in a carpenter shop in Denmark. And when the housing market collapsed during the Great Depression, the shop was then converted to manufacture toys. And when the wooden toy department burned down in 1960, the company staked its future on the little interlocking plastic bricks that did them make it. And today we know that company as Lego Corporation. They are the largest toy manufacturer in the world with sales of $6 billion annually. So God brings good out of bad things. We're trusting he's going to do that yet again. Well, let's begin our service with a word of prayer, and then we will have some more worship time. Again, Lord God, we turn to you. We thank you that you allow, um, you, you bring good out of the evil that is, is allowed in, in our world, and, and there's so much evil, but God, that you are sovereign, and you are in control, and you even can bring good out of that. And we pray that you would just have mercy on us. We're praying for our president tonight. We're praying for our country. We're praying for all of the doctors and all of the nurses, Lord, all of the emergency medical people, that you would please help them. All those in the hospitals and doctors' offices around the world, Lord, and around our own country, just please strengthen them for this fight. So many are working tirelessly. God is still within them strength to do their job. We pray your blessings on them and their families. Lord, some families are out of work. Some have financial needs. I pray you meet and bless those families. Thank you for the comfort that you're giving to the, the family of Phyllis Roar. Thank you for the, the comfort, Lord, that you're giving to the family of Jerry East. And we ask you to be with them. Be with Gay Cromwell there in the hospital. Be with our church family, Lord, especially those who have a need, those who need help, and I pray that, that they can, that, that that will be made known to people and that they can receive the help that they need. Father, we pray, bless this message to come in our time of worship together. We'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name.
Thank you, Juan and Melody, for that. It's uh, such an appropriate song. Christ is always such a time as this. And as I stand here now, reflecting on the words of that song, all I can think of is God, you are good. God, you continue to work in our lives even in such a time as this. This evening we were debating on whether or not to continue with our regular series or not. And then we decided that the fruit of the Spirit is an appropriate topic for this time. Especially tonight, where we talk about endurance or long-suffering. As I stand here now, I, I think about Miss Linda, who has always been concerned about me standing in the pulpit with my Bible, while well, tonight you have no choice, except for the fact that you may have to cut it off and then finish it tomorrow. I'm not sure. It's interesting when you're doing a, a stream like this, and you don't have to worry about getting people home on time. I told Pastor Dennis earlier, it doesn't matter how long it is.
But the truth is, it's not about what you're doing or why you're doing it. It's about why you're drawn to it. Why is it that this particular thing you have to see through? Why are you so passionate about whatever it is fill in the blank? See, the stories of those that accomplish these feats, no matter what the feat is, their stories inspire us and encourage us because if they can hang on, if they can be challenged and endure, then maybe we can too. We all face challenges. Every day, in fact. Now there's the obvious challenge of the coronavirus that has descended upon us right now. But beyond that, we face challenges every day. You see, a weightlifter will tell you that there are two methods to lifting weights. You can lift heavy weights fewer times in succession and produce greater strength, or you can lift lighter weights with more repetitions that produces greater endurance. In life, most of us can lift a heavy challenge if it only occurs a few times. It's painful, but it's manageable. However, it's the thought of challenges or problems that never seem to get solved that are much more difficult for us on a daily basis. They keep coming back over and over and over again, and we have to endure it over and over again, and there seems to be no solution in sight. Hebrews 10.36 Some people sick in a province in China. It had not yet reached the level that it is today. But God knew it was coming. And the fact is that this message for today about endurance is exactly at the right time. Today as I look out at an empty worship center and I think of a world lost in fear of what comes next and what needs to be done as we navigate this latest challenge, we must remain strong under the adversity of an unrelenting pressure. We must be encouraged that God is really real. He actively takes part in our lives. That is faith, and if we don't have faith, we don't have life, and if we don't have life, we don't have joy. If we don't have joy, we don't have hope. We have nothing. If I say I follow Christ, if I say that the Bible is my life, 
if this is what I model my life after. When things are normal or easy, how can I not when I'm called to endure? Life requires a sustained determination to remain strong in faith. The great author and apologist C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to get to a death world. First Peter chapter four, verses eleven, or excuse me, twelve and thirteen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that all the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with his exaltation. We go through trials each and every day, and God tells us, don't be surprised by that. Yet every day, someone turns away. Every day, Someone turns and runs from God. They run from their hope. Why? Because it's just too much. Lost. Fallen. If we don't sustain our determination, our endurance, then we will fail. And if you say, Pastor, that's a lot easier said than done. Pastor, you don't know what I go through every day. You don't know how hard it is, how much it hurts, how difficult it is to be alone and go through this. How can we possibly endure it without ever taking a break? James 1, 2 and 4 gives us the beginning of that answer. Consider it all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. When adversity strikes, how do we respond? We're told to count it joy. Embrace that challenge. Embrace that adversity. Billy Graham said, God allows difficulties, inconveniences, trials, and even suffering to come our way for a specific purpose. It helps develop the right attitude for the great growth of patience. As parents, it's never easy to watch your children fail. But we know how important it is that they do from time to time. My father from a young age taught me 
that it is much more educational to fail than it is to succeed. Because it's important to perseverance. Beloved, we don't know why life is the way that it is. We don't know the plan, why we go through these hardships, why life requires so much effort on a day-to-day -day basis, why bad things happen, but we do know that God uses it. He develops hope, he develops character, he develops maturity, he advances his kingdom through adversity and we are to embrace it. We're to count it joy because we know what happens next. You see, we as Christians live life knowing the end result, knowing where the story goes. And we understand that on the third day Jesus rose, we know that joy comes in the morning. We don't serve a dead and rotting corpse in some tomb somewhere. He is active, he is alive, he sits on his throne, and joy comes in the morning, and that's why we endure. Embrace the adversity. Count it joy. Have you ever noticed that many of the times that we fail, it's because we're trying to go it alone? When you fall down, you fail at something in life, something has occurred, and you look around and you're the only one standing there? You feel like you're in a box, in a bubble. You have friends, you have family, but they have no idea what's going on in your life. How often have you fallen over and over and over again and just keep it to ourselves? Hebrews chapter 12. Beginning in verse 1. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. He's given us examples throughout this book. He's given us people in our lives to run the race, we're not meant to do life alone. That's why it's so difficult to be told to stay at home by yourself. Don't come out, it's too dangerous. We run the race together. To live a life of endurance, surround yourself with champions. And no, I do not mean necessarily LU students. I mean those who will speak encouragement and peace and love and hope into your life on a daily basis. There may be no stronger example of endurance in this life than the Apostle Paul.
in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23, we read a little bit about what's going on in his mind and his life and how he looks at things. Are they servants of Christ in verse 23? I speak as if insane. I'm more so in far more labors, in far more imprisonments, beaten times without number, often in danger of death. Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned three times. I was shipwrecked. And night and the day I have spent in the deep. I've been on frequent journeys and dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my countrymen, dangers from the Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers on the sea, dangers among false brethren. I have been in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Why did Paul suffer for Christ? Why did he experience such an excruciating existence? And how did he never lose his faith? It's because from the day of Paul's conversion, his passion was Christ. And he pursued that passion Relentless. He lived for one single purpose. Beloved, we endure for the passions we pursue. How many times have you said to yourself, I would do that, but... I feel called to this, but I really know I should go this direction, but we have passions, we have callings, we have pursuits. But something is always holding us back. Hebrews 12, 1 says it very clearly. Let us lay aside every weight. What is it that's holding you back this morning? What is it that's weighing you down? Is it a who? Is it a what? Is it internal? Is it external? Beloved, we cannot live the life that God would have you live. We cannot live the life that God wants for us if there's a but still lingering in there. And once we shed that weight, once we get rid of what's holding us back, then all of a sudden quitting is no longer an option. Have you ever eliminated some of that weight and pressed forward towards what God is calling you to do? And then all of a sudden you realize there is no way you could ever turn away from it at that point. Quitting is over. If God has placed a burden on your life and there's a but keeping you from it, then you're a quitter. And you've forgotten Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If 
For many years, I sat back and said, I feel called to ministry, but but I want this, but I want that, but I want to go this way, but I want to go that way. I'm enduring nothing. The great author and apologist, Rabbi Zacharias, said where the eye is focused, there the imagination finds its raw material. The right focus must be one at immense cost and discipline. Train the eye to see the good, and the imagination will follow suit. So we have a simple question tonight. Where are you focused? Are you withering with a focus that's on this misdirected world, this fallen world? Are you focused on him? Dr. Elmer Towns told me one time that if God has placed the burden of ministry on you, you can do nothing else. And that rings true for anything that God puts in your heart, in your mind, in your soul. What that passion is comes from God. And if you're not doing it, because you're afraid that you may have to endure you're fooling yourself. Because God calls us to endurance. Philippians 3 verses 13 and 14 Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Where's your focus today? Don't be afraid to endure. Remember, God has placed a passion in your life. And if there's adversity that goes along with it, you embrace that adverse adversity and count it as joy. Surround yourself with those that will speak into your life and keep your focus laser etched on. Where is your focus tonight? God has given us all that we need. And we are made to endure. Nothing says it better than Romans 13, 11. And do this, knowing the time that now it is the high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. If your focus is not right, if you're worried about enduring, don't be. Because God has given you everything. Father God in heaven, we come to you tonight, Lord. Just scared of what happens next in this world. But also encouraged because we know that we serve a very real God. And we are excited by the fact that you use all things for good and the advancement of your kingdom. 
And Lord, as situations and circumstances have continued to change over the last week especially, and we don't know what happens next, we do know that you made us to endure it. That you have given us the tools and the ability to endure. And we thank you for that, Father. We love you so much. And even in our fallenness, we can see the gift that you gave us so freely. And we pray now, Lord, that anyone that is seeing this message, anyone that is hearing your word today, we pray, Father, that a mighty, mighty work would be done in their lives. That at the end of this crisis, at the end of whatever this is, whatever happens next, you would continue to be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 